Welcome to the Green Wisdom Health Podcast with Dr. Stephen and Janet Lewis, where you will learn about natural solutions to common ailments. And now, here are your hosts, Dr. Stephen and Janet Lewis. Hello and welcome to this week's show. I'm Janet Lewis. And I'm Dr. Lewis. And we are going to speak with you today about candida overgrowth, which is a very common problem, actually. And a lot of people don't even realize they have candida or as others would refer to it as yeast. It's not just for baking anymore. Or maybe it came from baking. I'm not sure. But Dr. Lewis is going to explain to us today about what it is, where is it, why you sometimes can't kill it, and are there things that you can do to help slow it down or stop it? So please educate us about candida, doctor. <laughs> uh, you talk about bacon. It's probably from eating too many baked goods because one of the worst things you can do is consume uh, grains and uh, sugars, things that turn to sugar very quickly and feed it. Uh, there's a couple of different theories out there, and, and it depends on what research you read and what uh, route you want to take. Some people say, take something to kill it and re-inoculate. Other people say, don't try to take anything that will kill it just to starve it out. I personally think it's better to take something to kill it. I, I think it's a faster road, and especially if you can't keep your diet perfect, and I don't know very many people that can. Um, candida overgrowth is a very, very common problem, and it, it's really hard to get tested because that's a normal inhabitant of your GI tract. It's just when it gets out of the proper ratios. Um, <clears throat> you know, as a chiropractor, um, I always would suspect that there's other things going on in the patient. If they presented with headache, I didn't assume it was a spinal misalignment, although I always looked for that. But I think, well, it could be those toxins that you've heard me talk about so much and persistent and causing the headaches and numbness, uh, bizarre pain syndromes. But people who have persistent headaches uh, many, many, many times, uh, yeast is either causing it or it's a major contributing factor to that. Um <clears throat> The hard part, I guess, is to have the courage to stick with it long enough to do all the, the, the make the physiological changes that you have. <clears throat> and um, I don't understand that and because I think, well, what other choice do you have? You can work toward getting better or you can just continue to suffer where you are. So, uh, you know, please. Forgive me, because I'm going to tell a quick personal story. A long time ago, I got bit a couple of times by a spider, and people say, is it brown recluse? I said, I don't know. I didn't see the spider. But anyway, me being the brilliant man that I am, I waited five days until I couldn't walk before I went to the doctor. I'm making fun of myself. That was not a brilliant choice. Um, so I went in, and I talked to the surgeon, and uh well, we, we kind of got in a little uh, head button contest, and he said, oh, I've got to put you in a hospital and, and put you under and do real surgery. I said, no, 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 I'm real conservative, just cut it out. And uh, he said, what do you mean conservative? I said, well, I do a lot of vitamins, minerals, herbs, uh, supplements. And he very emphatically, cockily said, they don't work. And he put some other words in there. And uh, anyway, I said, no, I don't want to go to the hospital. Just cut it out. He said, I can't deaden you uh, because of the cellulitis. And I said, fine, just cut it out. And he, he said, fine. And he started cutting it out with no anesthesia. And uh, I was sweating bullets. And anyway, he, he said, you're the toughest person I've ever seen. And I said, no, I was just scared of the hospital. Well, I was back in the hospital in two days getting real surgery. And I apologized to him. And, but anyway... They gave me all kinds of drugs, and they could not understand why I didn't have MRSA, methicillin-resistant Staphylococcus aureus. And I told him the story about some of these supplements he 
very emphatically said didn't work. And I gave a lecture to the uh, nurses at 3 a.m. about why I didn't have MRSA. And they actually sent another surgeon up to scratch, sniff, swab, and try to culture it. And they said, we don't understand, because if you don't get it from the spider, you get it from the hospital. Well, anyway, they gave me a massive amount of antibiotics because there's no real good um, program for brown recluse spider bites. All doctors seem to treat it very, very differently. I don't think any of us know what to do. But the IV antibiotics wrecked my immune system. And now I, I, I appreciate them. They saved my bacon. They saved my leg from rotting off. That's a good thing. But I went through six years of yeast fungus overgrowth, bleeding out of uh, fingertips, armpits, and places you don't want to hear about for six years. And I didn't give up. I kept going, going, going. In the meantime, you know, that uh, part of my leg healed up. uh, And I didn't have the uh, $6,000 skin graft. And the, the surgeon said, I don't understand this. I've never seen anything like this fill in this good this quick and he said i've cut it round where it couldn't grow together instead of cutting it oblong where it would know to go together which he so he admitted he did it that way so i'd get a six thousand dollar skin graft he said i've never seen it heal like this i said it was all those supplements that you said didn't work which he stormed off um but the whole point is that the iv antibiotics and there are many other things that contribute to a candida overgrowth Janet, with her knowledge and loving care, her tolerance, kind of nursed me back to health. And it took a long, long, long time, um, you know, six years of it. But, you know, the choice was go ahead and go downhill and die. So, you know, if you've got a persistent case, you know, stick with it and get your spouse to help you. You know, that's that's the key is having a good partner that's pulling in the same direction and it shouldn't take six years anymore. I'm smarter than I was back then, and we know ways to shortcut that. I'm always learning something new, and Janet is famous for finding really good research that is like, oh, my God. And, you know, she finds a lot of really good research, so she helps feed my brain, too. But candida can be really, really harmful because it produces uh you know something called mycotoxins and it causes all kinds of problems on a cellular level you lose your ability to make much energy that's all you can do just to fight it much less you know you can't get up and get going because you don't have much energy <clears throat> things that uh, it can cause is the headaches i talked about people that have chronic sinus problems uh, it's almost always a fungus or yeast uh, tension headaches uh, some migraines uh, and it can cause actually low blood sugar for a while uh, but it can cause bl- blood sugar changes because of the way it consumes the sugar that you put in and that, that it's really better to get on a, a good diet I'm a fan of paleo primal keto Atkins Mediterranean South Beach type diets uh, and, you know, it, it'll call mus- cause musculoskeletal problems. Anybody that has fibromyalgia, you have to look into the possibility of yeast being part of the equation. Notice I didn't always say cause. It's sometimes just part of the equation. You know, uh, leg pains, especially at night, uh, restless leg, muscle stiffness. You know, the fibromyalgia is the tough one. Uh, poor coordination. Uh, respiratory problems. Uh Frequent sore throat, uh, canker sores, I guess, uh, sinus infections, bronchial infections. And I used to have those, too. <clears throat> and see, I have to clear my throat a lot because two nights ago I ate ice cream, which fed the yeast. And it's something I don't do a lot of. So, you know, I knew I did it to myself. Uh, it can actually cause cardiovascular problems, and you know, just because a person has cardiac arrhythmia doesn't mean that they're about to have a heart attack, although you should be checked out by a good cardiologist when that happens. Um, people with chronic uh, urinary tract infections, uh, itching, burning, uh, men with prostate issues usually have an overgrowth of candida, uh, lack of bladder control, you know, that leakage. You know, when you laugh so hard and you say, stop it, you're going to make me wet myself. Uh, menstrual cramping and, and a lot of PMS can do that. But on the gastrointestinal problems, uh, people say, well, I have gas, bloating, belching, uh, 
Well, you probably have yeast. Here's the problem is sometimes when you're fixing this, that you can go through some symptoms while your body's getting well. And, you know, people say, well, the supplements are causing that. I said, well, get off the supplements. If they go away, then I apologize. And uh, they'll call back and say, well, I got off the supplements and I feel worse. And I said, you just don't have the faith to stick with it. So please, please, please. Find somebody you trust and then follow the program. It, it's very important to have the faith to go through the tough times because sometimes the getting well process is not always comfortable. You know, just like my spider bite, um, <laughs> it's pretty uncomfortable, but I had to stick with it. Don't be stupid like me. You know, I waited five days. If you know you've got a problem, don't wait. It's not going to get any better. Um, and I say stupid like me, men are... Men have a tendency to put it off more than women. Women really do, I think, have more wisdom than men in taking care of themselves because they're caretakers by nature, take care of, uh, you know, the kids and the husband more so than themselves. So, you, men, you probably should submit to the authority of a woman if, you know, if she thinks that this uh, podcast makes sense. Just say yes, ma'am, and do whatever she tells you to, because she'll take good care of you. Um, people that have uh, skin problems, uh, different types of rashes, uh, I hear that quite a bit um, when they work out and they get their blood flowing more, uh, especially uh, ones that have uh, rashes under their breasts, you know, because they have. Yeah, it's more moist, and so it's more prone to grow, and or the groin area, or diaper rash, or hives. You know that could almost always candida, yeast, or fungus are part of the problem. Uh, now I had a lady yesterday says, "Well, I got some steroid shots, and the yeast went ballistic, and that's one of the things that can happen." And that can happen naturally or whether you introduce different types of uh, you know, hormones and steroids of different types. Not that you may not need them for the condition, but you need to understand there's always the possibility of a side effect. And, you know, it can, you know, just be restlessness or panic attacks. This particular lady, uh, you know, broke out with what she called rosacea. <clears throat> um We'll get that under control pretty quickly with her. But, it, you know, if you have sleep disturbances, there are so many things we have that will help you sleep. But I tell people we, we need to get to the underlying cause, whether that's uh, anxiety from low or high cortisol, whether it's a thyroid that's not working completely correctly. Uh, because an overgrowth of yeast has so many detrimental side effects. And that's why I've always pushed probiotics and i tell my patients yes i sell a lot of them and yes they're more convenient but it's better if you learn to brew your own personally i've not seen any brewed locally that uh, are, are consistently fit to eat um i'm still working on that um uh, you know i mentioned fatigue uh, but most of the time there's weight gain and when people usually it's a woman because men seem to care less uh, when they have a craving for sugar, it messes with their appetite. <clears throat> it raises insulin levels, uh, lowers metabolism, increases fatigue. And here's another thing. Many people want it quickly, the weight loss, and it generally does not come quickly because physiology changes pretty slowly. So you want to stick with it. You know, you have to kill off the yeast. You've got to reintroduce uh, probiotics, and that takes a lot of time, and then get the inflammation down. And then and only then is it safe for your body to break down those fat cells because the fat cells actually contain a lot of toxins. And so if the body doesn't really have the energy to detoxify, it's reluctant to shrink those fat cells. So, you know, you have to be patient. And that's why I tell people, well, you know, if you're going to eat uh, the donuts and eat ice cream uh, and do all those, you know, eat the bread, then it's really not very likely that you're going to get the results. Or if you do, it's certainly going to be very, very, very uh, a long program for you. So, 
you know, that being said, uh, it, it's kind of a it's kind of a tough thing. But when I eat correctly, uh, when when Janet and I eat correctly, we actually eat about half as much as everybody else, and we we kind of notice how it makes us feel. Here's what you should include, and and people tell me every day, but I eat good, and I'm internally saying, well, if you eat good, you wouldn't be 180 pounds overweight. So we've had we have a distorted idea of what eating good is. Your doctor says watch your diet, and I'm thinking, yeah, I watch it when I eat it. That doesn't mean it's good. Nobody knows what a good healthy diet is for the most part. So I'm going to tell you, you should eat massive, massive amounts of broccoli, cabbage, cauliflower, onion, Brussels sprouts, watercress, arugula, kale, bok choy, radish, turnip, and sometimes beans and lentils. Although they do have the lectin issue. Uh, lots of garlic. And I told Janet, I said, I'll never eat another bok choy because we got more than I ever wanted when we went to China. Uh, but I guess I might eat them again. I don't know. Sometimes you have to hide the taste. People say, well, I don't like it. And I said, well, just because you don't like it doesn't mean you don't need it. Now, you can do some really wonderful things with cauliflower. Um, even Brussels sprouts, you know, wrap them in bacon. And Janice says, I wrap everything in bacon. I said, yeah, probably. She's probably right. In the fruits, you have to be careful because they need to be the lower sugar fruits. Uh, raspberries are pretty good. Strawberries are fine. Uh, I'd skip the bananas. I think an apple is good. And, of course, tomatoes and avocados are actually fruit, something that Janet thought I was brilliant because I figured that out. But uh, be careful with fruit. You can also get by with cantaloupe just because it doesn't have that high glycemic index. Um, For the protein, you know, it's better if you do the wild fish, uh, better if you do the organic uh, or pasture-raised beef and chicken and turkey, grass-fed beef. One of the reasons for that is if you get these animals out of a CAFO, confined animal feeding operation, they're fed antibiotics and steroids. Do you know about, I think it's 80% of all the antibiotics used in America are given to our chickens and beef and pigs. Um, I'm going to exempt it because I like bacon, but... That creates uh, antibiotic-resistant microorganisms, and that also dumps a lot of um, hormones and antibiotics into you whenever you're eating this type of meat. And that's a big part of the problem. Go back to the story I told about the steroids. Well, you're getting them in the meat that you eat. So Janet and I opt for organic as much as we can, and thank God it's finally made its way into Longview. Um, I would stay away from soy. I'm not a big fan of soy. Now, you can get a lot of good things from soy. You can get an isolate, but I would never do soy protein. Or uh, There's a lot of people that eat the soybeans. I don't. I, I think it's poison, but uh, fats and oils, you know I'm a pretty big fan of keto. Uh, you have to do the extra virgin olive oil, coconut oil, flaxseed oil, sunflower and sesame is really good. I eat a lot of butter. I am not afraid of animal fat, it, depending on the source of the animal. That's very, very important. Uh, I'm a big fan of eating nuts and seeds. And people say, what about peanuts? And it's like, well... They're not really a nut. They're a legume. And I like peanuts, but they have one of the highest toxic loads of anything you can eat. So I'm not, you know, I like them, but I don't consume many of them. Uh, When our granddaughter says peanut butter, she really means almond butter. She doesn't know she's getting the good stuff. Um, Milk. Some people have trouble with it. I think the coconut milk, almond milk, and hemp. Milk is good. I, I'm okay with uh, dairy, especially if it's organic and or non-pasteurized, which is hard to get. Uh, goat's milk is probably the closest thing to human milk, and it you'll, you'll really thrive on goat's milk. I had to find that for my kids when they were young. Um, on beverages, people say, well, what can I drink? I say, well, water. 
Um, green tea is good. Black tea can be good. I, I'm a big fan of coffee, but I do a lot less of it than I used to. And as I said last week, you know, when it comes to the spices and condiments, garlic tastes good, but it needs to be the fresh uh, minced garlic. And I didn't know it until recently. It's, it's the way it converts. So it's better if you do that. Uh, we do the pink uh, Himalayan sea salt. I think that's uh, that or the Celtic sea salt is good. Although Janet got me some black salt from Hawaii that's pretty cool. Uh, ginger and rosemary is really good. So that's the good stuff. And if you just ate that, not only would you lose weight, you would starve out the candida. You would feel better mentally, especially if you throw in a lot of probiotics because probiotics in and of itself uh, can make the environment unfavorable for yeast to grow and become uh, pathogenic, so to speak. Uh, some of the things you need to get out of your diet is canned vegetables, uh, canned fruit, because they're generally packed in high fructose corn syrup. Um, you mean the metal on the can isn't helpful? <coughs> no, not really. <laughs> And they, that's that's a good point. They put some weird stuff on the inside of the cans that actually at the base of it's bromine. And if you've listened to very many podcasts, you know how bad bromine is on the uh, thyroid taking the place of iodine. So eh, canned goods are not very good. <laughs> Sorry. So, uh, so fresh fruits. It's better. And, you know, I've never been a fan of Janet, you know, slaving and cooking and all that. We kind of eat very simply. You know, sometimes the best we can do is cut an avocado in half and uh, maybe eat a handful of walnuts or some organic popcorn. There you go with the grain. But we put sea salt and a lot of good butter on it. Uh, we very much eat simply. So, um, as far as protein, yeah, it's better if you get rid of the nasty mystery meats the hot dogs and sausage and uh you're just ruining everyone's thanksgiving uh, here coming up soon i know uh, you know I'm, I'm hesitating here because it's like i do make some exceptions just not a whole lot uh when i do these uh janet's very kind enough to give me a lot of digestive enzymes i've gone to doing two different ones two tablets each uh, which helps tremendously, and she at night she gives me probiotics. She wants to make sure that I don't forget because I'm a typical man. I'd take care of her a lot quicker than I take care of myself, but Janet's good at taking care of her and me. So I get a lot of probiotics at night because she hands them to me, and I just think, wow, she loves me that much, or she doesn't want me uh, passing gas under the covers. I'm not sure which. Uh, yeah, got a stinky look on that one. Um, <laughs> well, are there products that people can take to help uh, stop the craving for these bad foods? Because, you know, I know uh, in the past that if you start really craving it, it's like you just can't stop. It's like the you'll eat one thing and then it turns into wanting something else that's bad. And it's just like a, a cycle you can't break. So what would you recommend for for a product or two products that might help uh Calm all that down where you can make better choices out of your head instead of your gut. Well, probiotics, you know, I told Janet one time, I'm not taking this one probiotic because it's too blooming expensive, although I sell it all over the country uh, because the, it seems to help. The probiotic 225? That's my favorite. You know, it says 225. I think they make it at 400 billion. So you're getting a lot for your money there. That's an interesting uh, concept because I think the lady you mentioned that had the rosacea, um, that was one of our mm. questions to her was, what, yeah. uh, are you taking a probiotic? She said, oh, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm taking one. I said, well, can I see it? She said, yes. Yeah. She handed it to me uh, on the ingredients. It had one <coughs> billion bacteria in it. And I said, that's interesting. I said, our low, low end probiotic starts at 20 billion. And the one that Dr. Lewis is talking about is 225 billion. So the more you inoculate the gut with the good bacteria, it actually cuts down the cravings for 
uh, wanting the bad stuff. So, um, you know, if you're taking that one billion probiotic, take the whole bottle at a time and hope to God that it's really in there because that's the other part of it is you don't know whether or not it's been in a shelf stable environment. Or it's um, been sold off Amazon, a hundred and forty degree warehouse. Right, because they're not t- paying attention. To There's uh, there the product. There was a, a FDA special investigator said thirty something percent of all probiotics are totally fake. Uh, you know, there's the thing. This, you know, I was trying to be nice through this whole podcast, but I think I can't stay there very long. We have some people, and we have gobs and gobs of people that do the right thing and follow the program and get well. We hug each other, whether it's over the phone or, or personally. It's like, oh, I'm so grateful that they love themselves enough to make the world a better place to live. But we have some people that get the information, and then they go out and get the cheapest stuff they can find. And my, what I ask them, and I try to be polite, really, you want to go into a crack house and get the cheapest woman you can find with two teeth and think you're going to take her home and make a good wife out of her. And then why do you pick the cheap stuff to put into the temple of the Holy Spirit? You know, the, okay, I'm trying not to preach here, but the Bible says the body doesn't belong to you and you're, you're obligated to take care of it. But, uh, well, what's interesting is, you know, locally here when, when someone, purchases our things and they get well and they get better and then we don't see them for a while and i they fall off and i guess they start buying the inexpensive things because they think that's a better they don't really think it makes a big difference i don't guess well something's better than nothing and that's not always true but but every time they go back into a crisis and they're back to where they felt horrible to start with they come right back down here again to get the good stuff because they knew in their gut somewhere in their spirit, that's what made them well to start mm-hmm. with. So, you know, they do come back. So yeah. we're just trying to help you well, with not going down in the valley well, and staying up at the peaks all the time. And and there's so many people out there that are just very, very consistent. And I, you know, I don't want to get bogged down in naming, you know, many of them, but you know, there's a young lady up in Illinois, her nickname's Cricket. Her and her husband are just consistently for years doing that. Then you got Shauna from over in Tucson. God, she actually stopped by to see us one time. Those people are consistent, and they get consistent results. So we're not saying everybody does that. We're just saying we're trying to save as many people as we possibly can. We have the answers. So, you know, please let us help. And if you have loved ones that you want uh, help for, then hold their hand. Help them get you know, lab work and the the product I'd like to talk about briefly, just if you think you have candida overgrowth, uh, is called Candacid Forte. And it's super, super popular. And the things it has in it is biotin. And it's got a lot of biotin because when you have an overgrowth of yeast, it stops the absorption of biotin. And that's when people get, you know, thin, brittle hair, thin uh, fragile nails because the yeast is taking all your biotin. Then well, it's how interesting, and all the women just keep buying biotin, not realizing that maybe a, the root problem is actually yeast. Yeah, well, it's got sodium caprylate. Uh, well, yeast hates caprylic acid. It's got berberine. If you read about berberine, oh man, that stuff will kick butt and take names. Or it's called CM Core on our shelves. Yeah. Uh, that's the big dog. This is you know one of the ingredients here. Oregano leaf, then some more sodium caprylate, cinnamon bark, which helps. Uh, it acts like insulin, so helps the blood sugar issue. Uh, chamomile, ginger root, which is awesome. Then it has something I really, really, really like. It's called Paul Diarco Inner Bark Extract. There's studies that says that is anti-cancer, but there's also studies that says sugar causes cancer, yeast causes cancer, and cancer is a fungus. That's a book, Cancer is a Fungus. I love Paul Diarco, and there, we got more than one product with that in it, but this Candacid Forte is a kick butt, take names, let's get rid of the uh, candida. Then you can re-inoculate it with some really good probiotics, and we can make these changes. And one of the questions was, um, can you see candida on lab? So um, No, but you can suspect it. 
Right. And would you tell us how you could suspect that you know, kind of quickly and then uh, explain how people could get lab? Well, your eosinophils will be high and uh, basophils. And what happens is that the eosinophils come out uh, not just if you have candida, but can be all sorts of parasites, uh, food allergies, uh, sensitivities to environmental toxins and things like that. Uh, but it's in response to the uh, inflammatory histamines and cytokines. And a, uh, we don't want to get too deep into that, but we do know how to fix it. So you can be better. And if you've got a spouse, tell them to be patient that you'll be way, way better on the other side of this. So thank you very much. And bless, blessings to the ones that stick with it. And the ones that won't, we'll hug you till you get well. So just, you know, come on in. Once again, our show has come to an end, but your hope and your health is only beginning. If you or a loved one are in need of a different outcome and are waiting for a brighter future, take the first step and go to our website and fill out the health survey. Please don't keep us a secret. If you know someone that could benefit from this podcast, please share this show with your friends and family. You are only one step away from a life worth living.